bit loud. I think now I'm recording. All right, so, so we are in section, so this is uh, section 7.6. So, uh, hey, I need to meet someone. Um, all right, so this is, so this is about uh, normal approximation to, to a binomial distribution. So again, we discussed binomial distribution in the chapter, uh, chapter uh, six. Um, so this is binomial, uh, normal, normal approximation to binomial distribution. Approximation to uh, binomial uh, distribution. All right, so we said, so we discussed binomial distribution in chapter uh, six, uh, actually sections uh, 6.2 and 6.3. Um, so binomial uh, distribution or binomial experiment. So this was discussed in uh, sections uh, 6.2 and 6.3, right? So I'm gonna just, uh, very quickly remind you what's a binomial distribution. So in a binomial distribution, we have uh, two possible outcomes. You know, there's a success denoted by capital S and there's a failure denoted by capital F. And then there is a P, which is probability of success, probability of capital S. And there's a Q, probability of capital F. And we said Q is always one minus P. Right, and there is a number of trials n, number of trials, and then uh, there is r, which is our variable. So this is the variable. So this is a discrete, discrete variable of the the binomial distribution, and there will be a number of successes. So, so binomial uh, distribution. And actually this is R, uh, as we said, so R, this is just a, R is just a number of successes. Um, so, yeah, so what's the problem now? Well, the thing is, uh, so to find this probability of R, to find the probability of R, right, to find uh, P of R, the, the probability of our successes, right? So uh, we said we can use this uh, table number two from the formula sheet, right? Uh, so we, we saw how to use this table number two. So this is given. So we use, so uh, we use uh, table two in our formula sheet to compute or to find this uh, P of R. Right, but then, uh, as as I said yesterday, there's a problem with this table number two, right? The number, the values of n, uh, the number of uh, the the number of trials n, is actually uh, the largest number of trials or largest value of n in the in this table is actually twenty, right? In this table number two, the largest value of n is twenty, right? So the question is, so how do we compute this probability of successes for n? let's say larger than 20, okay? And uh, it's not just uh, larger than 20, but there are like uh, values between 16 and 20 uh, missing uh, and uh, values between 12 and uh, 15, uh, they are also missing, right? So there are some values missing uh, between 16 and 20. And of course, uh, there's a problem when our number of trials is larger than 20. So. Um, so the question is, so, so what can we do to compute this probability of successes? So what can we do uh, to compute this probability of our successes? If this number of trials n, let's say if n, uh, this number of trials is for example, larger than 20. 20. 
right? And because it's larger than 20, then it's not, so then it's not, it's not in the table two. It's not in table number two, right? So, uh, and as I said yesterday, there is this formula with a factorial and factorial, etc. But like for a large N, uh, like if N is very large, I don't know if N is 100 or 1000, you know, uh, then N factorial is gonna be a very, very huge number, right? So then you need a very powerful, very powerful uh, calculator if you wanna compute this uh, probability of successes. So instead of using a very powerful calculator, so what we can do is, so uh, we can use the following theorem. Uh, uh, so which says that actually we can approximate uh, this binomial distribution using a normal distribution. So if you have, so consider a binomial distribution. So you have a binomial distribution uh, with, um, Number of trials n, you know, with n, p, q, probability of failure, and r, number of successes. Uh, so with n, p, q, r uh, defined. Okay. Then if, so there are two hypotheses here. If you want to use this uh, theorem, then uh, there are two hypotheses. The first hypothesis is that uh, if your n times p, you need your n times p, n times p to be larger than five. And not just n times p, but also n times q. Um, n times q to be larger than five. Then if your n times p and n times q are larger than five, then the variable r, the number of successes, actually uh, uh, has a, a binomial distribution that, that's approximately, uh, can be approximated by uh, a normal uh, distribution. So then, um, uh, then the, the r, the variable r, the, the number of successes, okay, actually can be approximated by a normal distribution approximated by a normal distribution. So what does it mean for us? Uh, R can be approximated by a normal distribution. It means that actually you can convert this R like as we did for X. Remember we convert our X to Z and there's this X bar to Z, et cetera. We can do the same thing for this number of successes R. We can convert this R to uh, some value of uh, z, two values of z. So it's uh, approximated by a normal, by a normal distribution with, so the mean is gonna be the same mean as we had in the section 6.3 with mean mu population mean mu equal to n times p, right? And uh, standard deviation sigma. So sigma uh, equals to square root of n times p times q, right? So this is exactly the same mean and standard, standard deviation as in section 6.3. So this is the same as in section, same as in section 6.3. Okay. So, yeah, so, so the idea here is that, um, so we can use this theorem uh, to convert our R to uh, a value of C. So that the idea here would be to, uh, so if you have a binomial distribution and your uh, n times p, so given 
binomial, a binomial distribution. Okay. So we have this number of trials, number of successes, uh, probability of success, etc. And if with, so here, we need to check that n times p is larger than five and n times q is also larger than five, okay? But the thing is, if you have a, a number of trials very large, let's say not in the table, for example, if n is, I don't know, let's say n is 30 or n is 100, or n is at a 500 or something, then uh, I mean, then this n times p uh, is going to be actually larger than five. So for a large n, you know, if you have n large enough, then this n times p and n times u they're going to be larger than five. Okay. So yeah. So whenever you have this n large, very large, then you can use this theorem. Uh, and so if you have your NP larger than five and NQ larger than five, then you can convert, then we can convert, right? The values of R are the number of successes to values of Z, values of the Z. Z that's the, you know, the, the, the variable of the, the standard normal distribution. Anyway, and the mean, the mean, the mean would be this n times p and the, the sigma with mean with mu n times p and sigma uh, square root of n times p times q. All right, so, uh, so before the examples, um, there is one thing we need to, um, we need to be, uh, we need to be careful here. Um, so there is, there is a problem here, a small a little, little problem here. Um, so the problem is that R, uh, which is, uh, you know, number of successes, number of successes, uh, number of successes, that's a number of successes. This is a discrete uh, variable, right? It is a discrete variable. So what does it mean discrete variable? It means that R takes only a finite number of values, right? The number of successes is between, uh, you know, zero and the uh, uh, number of trials, right? If you have like five trials, then number of successes is either zero, one, two, three, or five, right? So the, uh, the number of values, the values of R is a finite, right? So this is a discrete, is a discrete variable. Um, okay. Uh, all right. The thing is, um, the the you know this uh, the variable z is actually is a continuous variable. So we are we're gonna convert a discrete variable to a continuous variable. So the thing is X or Z, so the Z is continuous, it's a continuous variable, all right? So we need to do like a continuity of correction here. There is continuity of correction. When you convert R, your R, Z or X, then we need to do this continuity correction. Okay. So the continuity correction, well, there are three cases, right? So the first case, the first case, this is when R is, you know, you have your R, probably that R is larger than, let's say, um, or let's start with a R less than number. So if you have your R less than some number, okay, less than some number, uh, for example, let's say R is less than, uh, for example, eight, okay. Then, uh, then uh, when we convert Uh, to x, 
or to z. So then we need, when we convert to x, then uh, uh, then we need to add actually 0 0.5 uh, to x. Then uh, uh, your x would be actually uh, less or equal to eight plus. So we, when it's uh, less, then we need to add uh, 0 0.5. So this is when the R is less. Less than. Okay. So we need to add this 0 0.5. So the reason is the following. So uh, you know we have your you have your distribution. This is your distribution. Uh, so here's the, the graph, all right? And there is your R here, which is equal to eight, right? And so you want to include this R, right? This is R less, you know, R is less or equal to eight, right? So if you just take the, the, the area to the left of R, okay? So if you just take the, the area to the left of R equal to eight, so there'll be this area, right? right? But the thing is here, R less than or equal to eight, you need to, you want to include the eight, right? But here eight, it's not included because you know, you're taking the, the area to the left of eight. So in some sense, the eight, it's not included. So what we do is instead of taking eight, we get, we're gonna take 8.5. So that's why we add this 0 0.5. So here, if you take 8.5 and you take the area to the left, then, then your R equal to eight would be included, okay? It would be, uh, be right here. Okay, so yeah, so whenever you have like R less than some number, then you need, when you convert to X or to Z, you need to add this 0 0.5. Uh, when your R is larger, uh, let's say R uh, larger or equal to some uh, number, let's say eight again, for example, and so this is more than or larger, more, more than, okay. Then, so when we convert, so when we convert, um, so uh, R to X, R to Z, Right, so because here it's more than, so here it's more than or equal. Okay, so here we include the eight, right? The number of successes, it's more or equal to eight or equal. Okay, so this is also, so this is less than or equal or equal. It can be equal to eight. Um, so in that case, um, so R is uh, more, more than or equal to eight, then we need to, so when we convert R to X, uh, then there'll be probability that X is more or equal to, so this would be more or equal to, uh, and then in this case, you need to subtract 0.5. So that would be eight, this is eight minus 0 0.5. Oops. This is minus uh, 0 0.5. Okay. And again, the reason is, um, so because again, you have your graph, this is your graph. And uh, here's your R equal to eight, for example, right? And you wanna, you wanna probably that R is more or equal to eight, right? So that would be the area to the right. So this is area to the right, of course, area to the right. Okay, so more or equal to eight, that would be, you know, supposed to be this, 
area to the right of eight, right? But the thing is, you, here you don't really include the eight, right? Because like this is this eight is like the border, so it's not really included. So you if you want to include this eight, so you need to go uh, 0.5 to the left. So you subtract this 0.5, so you get this, you know, eight minus uh, 0.5. That will be 7.5. So then. Uh, at 7.5, when you take the area to the right, then, then you make sure that actually you included the eight, the, the, the eight right? So then your eight is gonna be included. Okay. Uh, now, the third case, when you have R between, you know, two numbers. Professor, can I ask you a quick yes. question? Yes, yeah, please. So we never include the borderline. Yeah, we never include the yeah. borderline. So it's, you either you, so when it's less, you need to add this 0. 0.5. When it's mm -hmm. more, then you uh, subtract this 0. 0.5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then the third case, when you're, um, when R is like between two numbers, like uh, probably that R, for example, um, let's say uh, three and uh, eight, okay? So R is between three and eight. R is between number of successes is between three and eight. Three and eight. Okay. So R, so here R is more than, so here we are saying R is more than three. More than three. And here we are saying that R is less than eight. Less than eight. Okay. So when R is more than a number, we said, we need to subtract 0.5, right? Uh, we said when R is more, like here R is more than eight, so we subtract uh, 0.5. And when R is less than some number, like here less than eight, then we added 0.5. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So first for R more than three, uh, because it's more than, then gonna subtract 0.5 from three. So when you convert, so when, uh, we convert to X, X. So that will be, uh, so here's the X, but then, so we're gonna subtract 0.5 from the three and we're gonna add. I'm sorry, 0.5. Professor. Yeah, please. Um, to be on the same page, uh, the example you're doing now, isn't the first sign supposed to be that? Opposite sign if it's more than uh, a P, uh, uh, probability uh, three. You said oh, more oh, than, but that's like a less than, I think. No, I actually, that's uh, yeah. The thing is, this, that's like three less than R. You're right. This is three less than R, but it means that R is more than three. You know? Okay, I'll continue. I'll, I'll start picking up. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. That's a good. That's a, you're right. This is this symbol here means less. But what's less than? So this is three less than r, right? Mm -hmm. This is three less than r. But if three is less than r, means that r is more than three. Yeah. So it, yeah. So, so I think so. I see your 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 statement at the top. It says r is more than three. Got it. Yeah, so if R is more than so, three, that's why, yeah, that's why- You're yeah. reading it backwards, that's basically yeah, yeah. what yeah, it no, is. But you're right, that's a good point. Okay. Um, yeah, I know, it's kind of confusing, but the, yeah. So, but, yeah, and yeah. it looks a lot similar like the other one, so I'm just thinking on, I'm letting, I'm seeing where, where it's going to be the, the difference when uh, it's written on a, like, let's say like a word problem, where mm -hmm. would it be the difference? Where do I perform this? Um, steps or the other ones yeah so you'll see like in the end of the examples we're gonna have uh so yeah so when it says like less uh like here number one says less or less than the sum number uh then you're gonna you're gonna add this 0.5 when it says more then you're gonna subtract and when it's like between two numbers you need to subtract yeah so the thing you subtract 0.5 from the first and you add 0.5 to the second because the, the idea is, the, is this, uh, uh, again, so here's your graph, uh, oops, yeah. So, and then here's R is three, 
right? This is R is equal to three, and here's R is equal to eight, right? But the thing is, you need you want to include this R equal to three and R is equal to eight. So if you just take uh, between three and eight, then yeah, as Kayla said, then the borderline actually is not included. So if you take just you know this is R is three, this is R is eight, right? But the thing is, this borderline as Kayla said, the, when R is eight and R is three, they are not included in your probability, right? So the thing is you need to go like 0.5 to the left here. So three minus 0.5, that will be 2.5. And here you're gonna go a little bit to the right with a 0.5, so that's 8.5. And then between 2.5 and 8.5, you're gonna have exactly what you want. So then your R equal to three and R equal to eight are included. You see, so then this R, here between 2.5 and 8.5, the R equal to three uh, and R is equal to eight are included. So that's why you need to go like 0.5 to the left and 0.5 to the right. Um, yeah, so yeah, guys, just uh, be careful with this uh, correction, continuity correction, because the thing is R is, uh, is a discrete variable. So when you say R is equal to three, you, you want to include this R equal to three, right? So if you have like three successes, you know, you want to include this uh, R equal to three successes. But the thing with uh, the, the, the continuous variable, the, this borderline, like as, uh, as Kayla said, like when you, you, you take the area between two numbers, then the, the two numbers actually that are not really included in the, you know, in the, in the probability, okay? Um, and we always take, uh, the 0.5 less. less to the yeah. um, left side and then add uh, 0.5 to the right yeah, side. To the right, yeah. Just make sure you include the, you know, okay. the, the three and the eight, like in this example. Um, yeah, so, yeah, let, so let, let's do a couple of examples, right? So, um, all right. So let's do exercise, for example, nine from the textbook. Uh, I'm going to do it as an example. So exercise, uh, this is an example, but as I said, this, this is actually exercise. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, thoughts about murder. Okay, well, let's do 12. I guess let's just try 12 first. Exercise 12, page um, 255. All right, um, so what does it say this 12, I just 12. Uh, what are the chances that a person who was murdered actually knew the murderer? This is uh, blah, blah, blah. So it says about 64% of people, uh, so it says the following. So suppose about, so 64% uh, of people, Who are uh, who are murdered? Uh, actually, knew the person knew the person who committed the the crime. Uh, this is a, okay. Anyway, so knew the they knew the the person who com committed the the murder. So the person who committed the, the murder. So, uh, so it says the, uh, let's see, what's the probability of that? Uh, let's do first uh, B, okay? I'm gonna do the B and then we'll do the A. So B says, uh, what's the probability that uh, at most, uh, 48 at most, 48, Oh, first uh, we have 
suppose we, we suppose that um, actually there are 63 uh, current and solved murders. So first, before the probability here, uh, uh, yes, sorry about this. So we suppose, so suppose there are uh, 63 current uh, and solved uh, murders. So there are like 63 crimes or murders. Uh, so of course, when you select a random murder, uh, so either uh, the, uh, the victim knew the, the person who committed the murder, or of course the the, uh, the 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 victim didn't know the the you know the, the person who committed the murder. So we have uh, uh, two possible outcomes, right? When you select uh, a random uh, victim, right? Um, either so the person uh, the victim knew the the, the 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 person who committed the murder, who or uh, doesn't know the the, the person, right? The, the murderer. So. Um, so now we have this uh, 63 current uh, unsolved murders. And then, so we need to find, so what's the probability that, probability that, uh, so in B it says at most, so at most 48 of the victims knew their murders at most. Forty-eight of uh, of the victims knew knew their murder. Knew their murder. So, all right. So this is, as I said, this is. Um, so this is a binomial distribution because when you select a random, so when you select a random victim, right? You select a random uh, victim, a random victim. So there are two possible outcomes. Either the victim knew the, the murderer, right? Uh, so the victim knew or knows the, the murderer. Okay, or of course the victim doesn't know the murderer. He doesn't know. Uh, the murderer. Okay. All right, so, uh, so um, what's the probability of success here? So the success let's say would be, so the, uh, that's when the victim knows the murderer, right? So that's, let's say this is, would be a success. That would be success. And if the victim doesn't know the murderer, that will be a failure. So what will be a probability of success? So what's the probability that um, a victim- So knows? It's, it's 63 on success? Oh, it's yeah, on the- this is, Yeah, this, it, this yeah. is 64. 64. 64. Yeah, 64. 64%, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's a probability of success. And then uh, failure would be 36? Yeah, failure would be 36. So probability of success, 64%. Or uh, in other words, uh, if percent, of course, that's division by 100. So that's 0 0.64. And uh, so probability of failure, that would be 36 percent uh, because that's uh, you know 100 that's supposed to be 100 minus 100 percent minus the 64 percent right so yeah so probably the failure is uh, 0 0.36 right 36 divided by 100 that's the 0 0.36 all right so that's a, that's the p that's a, sorry this is q this is Q, of course, sorry. Let me just write down here. So probably the failure Q, this is Q. So this is Q and this is P. 
microbic of success. All right, guys. Now uh, we have 63 current and solved murders, right? So uh, 63, that would be the number of trials, right? Because you take a select a random and solved murder, and you want to know if the victim uh, knew uh, the murder or uh, the victim doesn't know the murder, right? So it's that's a uh, 63, that will be the number of trials here. So N, the number of trials is number of trials, that will be 63. Um, all right. Um, so as you can see here, N, is 63 and 63 that's not in our you know in our uh, table number two right uh, remember let me just go to this table here you know table number two for the this binomial distribution right the n you see the n so the first uh, the first column so the it starts with two three four etc but then it goes all the way to, so largest number as you can see is 20, right? So we cannot really use this table to, you know, to find our probability, right? Uh, so uh, because N here is 63, right? So it's kind of a large number. All right, so what, are, what we are supposed to do? Well, instead of using the table, which I uh, actually we can, we cannot really use it, right? Uh, we can try to approximate our R, uh, you know, by using a, a normal distribution. So we can try to convert R to Z, okay? But um, so, so the idea here, um, so try to convert R to X and then to Z, okay? But then uh, you need to make sure guys, so if you wanna, if you wanna use uh, the theorem, uh, or you want to convert your R to Z, we need to make sure that, you know, that we had like two hypotheses. You need your N times P to be larger than five. Um, here, we said, uh, we said uh, if N times P is larger than five and N times Q is larger than five, then yes, then you can convert your R to, uh, to X or to Z. Right, so we need to make sure that n times p is larger than five, and n times q is larger than five. That's like a, you know, that's like a hypothesis if you want to use the theorem. So, uh, so we need to make sure. So we need to check. We need to check that n times p is more than five, and n times q is more than five. All right, so this is like your first step, right? All right, so let's just compute this n times p. And we have number of trials, we said that's uh, 63. We have uh, 63 uh, current unsolved murders. So 63, that's n times p. P is, uh, 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 you know, t, p I'm is sorry, uh, zero. Sorry. Yeah. Can you remind me where did the five came from? The five, that's, for, that's from the, the hypothesis in our theorem. So to be able to approximate this R with a normal distribution, uh, we need the N, N times P and N times Q to be larger than five. But it will always be this. That's what I'm, I'm trying. To no, but the thing is, if your N is large, you know, if your N is large enough, then mm -hmm. the, the both conditions, they're gonna be satisfied, right? Because remember, if N is small, like, you know, from one to 20, you can always use uh, the table. Yeah. The table too. But if N is large, so that's, that's the idea. If N is large, large enough, then this N times B, times P and N times Q, they're gonna be uh, both larger than five in general, okay? That's what I'm saying. You see, so it's like, this is like, this is like saying, well, if N is really small, if N is really small, then you can use the, the table, the chart. But if N is large, then uh, you can use this theorem. But you need to check, right? You need to check this n times p and 10 times q are larger than five. All right, let me just make this them like small a, for the test. <laughs> yeah, this is like, a, no. Please. No, well, well no, no, you know, because 
you know, we got, because the, there is a problem with the table, right? The, the, we no, don't have all the values. Yeah, we don't have all the values for n, so that's like a problem. And yeah. as I said, the, your n can be very large. I mean, uh, like, well, like in next exercise, size, it's like 700 or something. But here it's uh, like just uh, 60 feet. But uh, yeah. yeah, so but if you do now 63 times, just make sure that the hypotheses are satisfied so you can use the theorem. So 63 times the P, which is uh, 0 0.64. So that will be equal to, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, uh, yeah, it's 40.32. 40, 40. Uh, uh, okay, so this is, uh, you know, very, very larger than the five, of course, right? So the idea is, you know, when your n is kind of large, then this uh, in these two conditions they're going to be automatically satisfied in some sense. Okay. Um, yeah, and then uh, of course there is the second uh, the second condition is that your um, so this is n times p, and the second condition is n times q. So that's sixty e times the q. It's uh, zero point uh, uh, thirty six. And that would be equal to actually, uh, let me see, 0 0.36. So that's uh, 22, actually, point, uh, 0.68. So it's larger than five. It's more than, it's actually four times five, more than four times five. Anyway, yeah, so the two conditions are satisfied. Two conditions are satisfied. So we can use our theorem, we can convert Z to X, uh, sorry, uh, R, not Z, R, number of successes to Z. All right, so now second step. So this is when uh, we're gonna convert, so step two. Well, first, uh, we need to find, so what's the question here? It says, what's the probability that at most, Right, so at most guys means no more than right, so or maximum. So at most, so at most forty-eight of victims smooth their murder, right? So at most forty-eight. Let me just write it down here again. So at most forty-eight. So at most means the maximum is forty-eight, right? No more than forty-eight. No more than forty-eight no more than 48. Or in other words, the maximum is 48. The maximum is 48, okay? So you wanna find the probability that R, uh, your R, number of successes, the number of successes that the number of victims who knew their, who, uh, knew their uh, murderer is no more than 48, so R, is no more than 48, so R is less. So in other words here, maximum is 48, so R is less or equal to 48, right? No more than 48, so R is less or equal to 48. So less or equal to 48. So, all right, so then, uh, so we said at most 48, then number of successes is no more than 48. Um, but the maximum is for 48, so R is less or equal to 48. So now I can convert my R to Z. But before that, as I said, when you have less than, less or equal, less, uh, make sure that you include the 48, right? So here's your less or equal, right? This is less or equal, R is less or equal. So make sure that you, you wanna include the 48, right? So then we need to add this point, uh, 0. Point, uh, 0. 0.5 to the 48. So we're gonna add, so plus, because you wanna make sure to include the 48, right? So we're gonna add the, so this is probability that X is less or equal to 48 uh, plus 0. 0.5.
So in other words, this is probably that X that's or equal to 48.5. All right. So now, of course, you can, you know, we can convert our X to, uh, to Z, right? So this is the first step, supposed to, we are supposed to convert. So here we convert X to Z as usual, X to Z. All right, the question of course is now to convert X to Z, remember the formula was X minus mu over sigma. So we need the, you know, you need the, the mu, the, the mean, and you need the standard deviation, right? So what's new in this problem? Well, we said, because it's a binomial distribution, so the mu is equal to n times p, and the sigma, this is square root of n times p times q, right? Because it's a binomial distribution. So this is, again, this is just a section uh, 6.3. So n times p, uh, well, so mu, which is, let me write it down here. Uh, so mu, which is n times p, and again, it's uh, 63 times p, that's 0 0.64. Uh, and we said this is actually equal to uh, 40 point, uh, 32. And sigma, we said it's square root of n times p times q. So square root of n, which is 63, times p, p is 0 0.64, times uh, q, q we said that's one minus p, so that's uh, 36, 0 0.36. So first guys, we need to multiply the whole thing under the square root, okay? Uh, so 63 times uh, 0 0.64 times 0 0.36. So that would be equal to actually uh, uh, 14. So this is actually, so under the square root, you're gonna have like 14.5152, uh, I think, right? But then you take the square root of this, right? So then uh, sigma, this is again sigma, then sigma is actually equal to uh, 3.81. Square root of 14.51, uh, it's uh, actually 3.81. Right, so we, we got our mu. Uh, mu is mu, the mean, it's 40.32 uh, and sigma is uh, 3.81. So here, when you convert, you know, your X to Z, so you take your, the value of X. So this is your value of X, 48.5 minus, you're supposed to subtract uh, the, the mean. And the mean we said it's 40.32. So 40.32. And then we divide by sigma. So sigma is 3.81. Right, this is here's your sigma, 3.81. So here divided by 3.81. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, now we can just, uh, you know, compute this fraction. So, uh, so again, let me just write it down here. So this is, Z less than, so we have this 48.5, we said minus 40.32 over 3.81. So when you subtract the top, uh, in the top you have, uh, that would be uh, 8 point, uh, I think 18 over 3.81. Uh, uh, so that would be equal to probably that Z is less uh, Z less than, um, so I think it's 2.15, 2.15. And then uh, Z less than uh, 2.15, then we can use our uh, chart. This is uh, table three. So now we go to the table three and then, you know, uh, where is it? Um, so we can 
go here, table B, right here. Uh, 2.15, so then the answer uh, positive Z, right? 2.15, nearest uh, tenth, it's uh, 2.1, and nearest hundredth would be uh, 0 0.05. So then the answer is 98.42, uh, right? So the answer, answer is 0.98.42. In other words, that's 98.42%. So yeah, so the answer guys, what we are saying here is that the probability that the number of successes are is uh, less or equal to 48, no more than 48 or at most 48 is, uh, yeah, is this uh, uh, 98.42. So probably that R is less or equal to this 48 is actually 98.42. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I mean, compared to the previous sections, guys, uh, you know, when we convert X to Z, so here for R, just be careful with this, uh, you know, this continuity correction, this plus 0 0.05 or minus 0 0.5, but it's, but then it's just the same thing as uh, we had in the previous sections, right? Convert, then you convert your X to Z as usual. Of course, the mean and the sigma, they are not given. You need to compute the mean and the sigma, but we know how to do that for, you know, binomial distribution uh, from section 6.3. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Any, any questions so far? Um, we can, we, uh, we can, we can, we're gonna do that next. Uh, well, we're gonna finish the, the, this exercise. Actually, this is B from exercise 12. Um, well, we can do the A. Uh, let me see first if if there is any question. In I just don't feel too confident with this so. one. Like I can do it, but I I won't have you on 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 my ear during the test. So as you're going, yes, I get the steps, but then it's, it's uh -huh. like too much of going back to six point three, then taking steps from seven point. Oh but yeah, I, so it's, it's a combination. A, of, ah, it's so much. Yeah, actually, it's a combination of uh, well, you know, it's, it's simple when you're saying it. At least for me, when you're going, okay, it makes sense. You know what numbers to add to subtract to, you know, add the mm -hmm. zero point yeah. five. But then just uh, maybe not, but just seeing the problem by itself, I don't know how far. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, like in the test or the, the you are not supposed to memorize everything, right? You're just, uh, yeah. you, know, you can use a formula sheet. Um, you can use your formula sheet yeah. in the test in the final. Um, so, but of course, you need to know the steps, how to, uh, you know, yeah. solve that. But, um, you know, it, it's normal. This is like a combination of, uh, you know, section, chapter seven and six. So, I mean, it's kind of, um, you know, uh, you know, there are like, as I said, like this is there's a problem with the number of trials because uh, the the chart doesn't cover all the values of n, so it's like uh, it's normal to you know uh, to use this like this normal distribution. So get, we would have to like you know yeah. um, figure yeah. out n yeah, q and then change it to the l m u, uh, yeah. you know, it's a, yeah, the, yeah. the stigma, yeah. but. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right, let me do one more, at least one more, more, more uh, example here. So let, let, if we do, let's try the, the A, the same exercise, there's uh, A. So in A, in A it says, um, well, what's the probability that at least 35 of the victims knew their murderers? So at least here it says at least um, 35. It says 35 of the victims. Come on. Uh, no. Victims knew their murderers. 
All right, so here it says at least, right? So uh, at least, that's like the minimum, right? We said at least that, that would be the minimum. Minimum is 35. So it's 35 and more, right? Minimum is 35. So in other words, that's like 35 or more, right? So, so you are looking for the probability that R, the number of successes, is at least 35 or 35 or more, right? So R is more or larger or equal to 35. And so this is larger or more than, more or equal to 35. You know, whenever you see like when it says, uh, uh, you know, a more or uh, less or between, you know, you know, then in some sense, you know that you need to convert at some point, you need to convert your variable to C, right? But of course, mm -hmm. you need to be careful uh, if your variable, like if it says like your variable X is a normal distribution, then of course, if the X is, if the variable is a normal distribution, then uh, then of course it's not a binomial distribution, right? So you get you have your variable x and you convert to x to z. But if it doesn't say like it doesn't say like uh, you have like a normal distribution, then probably you're you have a binomial distribution, okay? Okay. Uh, because, yeah, you know, basically we did like the, the main two this, the probably the distributions we did are the the binomial in the mm -hmm. chapter six, and then the chapter seven we did the normal, right? The so, normal, okay. Yeah, so either it's going to be the normal or binomial. Right? So that one so, sentence, I'm going to watch this yeah. again. Yeah, but, you know, for the normal distribution, the, the mean, the mu, and sigma are given. So it's going to say, well, x follows a normal distribution with the mean mu equal to something, et cetera, right? So mu and sigma, they're they are going to be given in the problem. In a binomial, you're going to see, like, a, there's a percentage, which is... Uh, probably be your probability of success, right? But there will be no mu and the sigma, right? There will be no mu and sigma in the problem. So because you're supposed to know how to compute the, the mu and the sigma. Anyway, so yeah, so um, so here we said, we said um, yeah, R is larger or more or equal to uh, 35. So uh, first we need to convert this R to uh, you know, the, the continuous variable X. So here's X more than, but in this case, we need to make sure that we include this 35, right? So if you wanna include the 35, when X, uh, your R is more than, right? Uh, then you need to, so as you can see here, when your R is more than, then you need to subtract 0.5. So then you make sure that you include the 35. So here we need to subtract 0.5, 0 0.5. So here, this X would be 35 minus 0.5. And again, this is minus because uh, it's more or equal to, uh, sorry. It's more or, or equal to 35. So make sure to include the 35, you need to subtract this uh, 0 0.05. Okay. All right, so in other words, yeah. this X is uh, larger or equal to uh, 34.5. And now, you know, just to convert X to Z as usual, convert X to Z. Uh, so this is probably the Z larger or equal. So this is convert this value of X to a value of Z. So 34.5. Now what's mu? Well, this is a binomial distribution. So the mu is supposed to be N times P. It's the same N, same P, right? It doesn't change the number of trials, number of six, uh, probability of success. They, they, they don't change. So it's the same mu, which is 40.32. So 40.32. Down. And divided by, it's the same sigma, right? So a sigma, it's a square root of this n times p times q. So it's again 33.81. So 
So this is over at 3.81. And uh, yeah, so it's just uh, Z more uh, larger or equal to, so 34. Uh, so we have 30 in the top, 34.5 minus uh, 40.32, so that would be equal to uh, negative. So be careful here. This is negative, so 5.82 over divide by 3.81, right? So we need to divide, so divide by 3.81. So that's negative, actually, uh, one point, uh, negative 1.52. All right, now we are supposed to use this the table theory or the chart, but the thing is, uh, be careful. This is Z more than, this is the area to the right, more. So that's the area to the right. And uh, you wanna convert this to area to the left. So the area to the right is always one minus the area to the left. So yeah. Z would be, Z is less than uh, negative 1.52. So this is less. So this is the area to the left, right? So then, okay, now once you express, uh, well, once you have your one minus area to the left, then you can use your chart, so one minus, so negative 1.52. So if you go to the chart, uh, table B, that's negative. Negative 1.5 nearest uh, tenth, right here. Negative 1.5, right, and uh, nearest um, uh, hundredth. It's uh, two, so zero zero two. So that's uh, zero six forty p, right? Yeah. So zero six forty p. So this is uh, so zero six point zero six. Uh, what did you say? 52? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, where is it? Uh, like zero, yes. Zero six. Uh, 40 feet. 43. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ryan. All right. So, yeah. Well, then you are done. So it's just one minus uh, this uh, 0. Uh, 0. 0.06 40 feet, which is actually equal to uh, 0. Point, uh, 0.93. So 0. 0.93 percent. Ninety point fifty seven percent. All right, guys. Um, I can uh, probably do uh, another exercise from the textbook. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, so let's do, so, well, let's see how uh, we cover all the cases. So here in A, uh, sorry, in B first, uh, let's see, uh, B, we have this at most. So we said at most, that would be less or equal to 48. And then in A, we have this at least. So that's the uh, more than 35, more or equal to 35. And now I guess we can do uh, between, right? Between two numbers. Yeah, so let's do, um, so exercise, let's do exercise um, nine. So I think this exercise nine actually covers all the cases. It's more, less, and uh, between. All right, so on uh, nine page, the same map page, actually, 355. All right, size nine says the following. Uh, it is estimated then that uh, 3.5 of the general population will live as their may, may uh, so it is, it says, it is estimated Uh, that 3.5 percent of the general population uh, will live 
uh, plus their 90th uh, birthday plus their uh, 19th uh, birthday. Okay. Now, in, uh, it says in a graduating class of, in a class of uh, 753 high school uh, seniors in the class of 753 high school high school uh, seniors. What's the probability that uh, what's the probability? So, So what's the, the probability that um, all right, so we have A, uh, B, A and B uh, both are 15 or more, uh, will live beyond their uh, 19th uh, birthday and then 30 or more, they're the same thing. So let, let's just uh, do the A for example or the B. So let's take 30, 30. So uh, the probability that 30 or more will live uh, beyond their uh, 19th, beyond their 19th uh, birthday. Right? So 30, 30 or more. And then C, it says between. So A, B, and C, it says between 25 and 35. We'll live between 25 and 35. We'll live, uh, same question. So we'll live, we'll live beyond the 19th uh, birthday. 19th birthday. And uh, let's do uh, no more. So C, C. Um, I'm gonna just uh, probably change the other question. Uh, D, uh, let's say uh, 40, 40 or less, or less will live. Uh, beyond their uh, 19th birthday. All right, guys. So here, this exercise, I guess, cover all the covers all the cases. So 30 or more between and 40 or less. So uh, yeah. Um, so the idea again, guys, here is that. Uh, so we have this percentage, uh, this 3.5. So it says 3.5 of population will live as their 19th uh, birthday. So if you select a random person, right? That will be uh, a success. Then, yeah, that will be the success. So the, the probability that the, the person will live uh, past uh, his 19th birthday is uh, 3.5. So that's the probability of success. So whenever like, you see a percentage, like in the first sentence of the problem, so that's probably, it's just, a, it's a binomial distribution. So uh, yeah, so that would be the problem of success. And then we need the, uh, the sample. Um, so number of trials, right? So we have this class of 753, 7, 753 uh, high school seniors, right? So we have this so sample of seven, 753 uh, 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 high school seniors, right? And uh, yeah, so this is this is your N, and this will be your P for a bit of success. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, well, we have like 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so you know what? Let me go over the problem. So uh, let, let's do it together. So, uh, because we have just 10 minutes. So, so as I said, this is a binomial distribution because when you select a random, uh, random person, uh, well, the person, so either he will live 
past their uh, past the, his uh, 90th, 90th birthday, so that will be a success. Or uh, he will uh, die b before the, his 90th birthday, so that will be a failure. So, um, so we have a binomial distribution and probability of success. Probably that a person will live past his uh, 90th uh, birthday is 3.5 percent, right? So, so here P is probability of success. Let's say is 3.5 percent. So then Q, so in other words, P is 100 percent, that's the division by 100. So 3.5 over 100, that's uh, 0 0.035, right? And then probability of failure, Q, that's one minus P as usual. So Q is one minus P, right? So in this case, that will be uh, 0 0.965. One minus, so in other words, this is one minus, of course, one minus 0 0.035. So then Q is uh, 0. Point, uh, as I said, 90, 965. Okay. Number of trials, we have this group of uh, 700, uh, 750 uh, high school seniors. So a number of trials is 750. And uh, yes. And as you can see, of course, this N is, this number of trials is very large, right? 700 and something, right? So or we cannot use our chart. Uh, this is a very large number. So the idea would be to, you know, try, try to approximate the number of successes using, of course, this uh, variable uh, Z. So, um, yeah, so we need to make sure, of course, always we need to make sure that, so we need to check. So we check. In order to use our theorem, we need to check. We check if n times p is larger than five, and n times q is also larger than five. So this is like again, this is like conditions uh, to use uh, this the normal approximation. So yeah, so n times p, n is seven fifty three times p. P is uh, zero point zero three five. So uh, let me see my notes. So this is seven, seven uh, fifty three times zero point uh, zero thirty five. So that's actually equal to uh, twenty six, you know, point uh, thirty five five. Anyway, so this is larger than uh, five, of course. Again, the idea, guys, is when n is very large. Uh, so this n times p is automatically satisfied. But anyway, uh, and you do the same for n times q. So this is also, this is of course uh, larger than the phi. Uh, I mean, if you do 753 times uh, 0 0.965, that'll be actually equal to uh, 726, 726.6 or something, anyway. So it's larger than five. So we can use we can use a normal approximation. All right. So then uh, to answer A, so what does it say? A A. Um, what's the probability that uh, 30, 30 or more, right? Thirty or more will live beyond their nineteenth birthday. So thirty or more. That's more than, so 30, 30 or more. So then R, the number of successes is uh, more or equal to 30. So we need our R, probably the R is larger or equal to this 30, right? P zero. So this is larger. R is larger than or equal to 30. Okay, now want to convert this R to uh, Z or X first. So the thing is, we need to make sure that we include this uh, 30, right? Three zero, okay? So in this case, when it's larger, then we subtract. So we need to subtract uh, 0.5 to the 30. So this is probably that X is larger or equal to, because it's larger, so we're gonna, we're gonna add 0.5 to the 30 plus. 
0 0.5. Again, the plus 0 0.5, that's because it's larger. Okay, that's why we have plus to include the 30. Um, so this is probability that x is larger than uh, 30.5. All right, so now uh, we can convert our x to z as usual. So we can convert this uh, value of x, 30.5. Uh, but to convert this 30.5 to a value of z, we need to subtract the mu. Mu is n times p, right? The, the mean of a binomial distribution, uh, it's n times p. Uh, and we already computed n times p, so we said it's actually 26.355. So this is minus, you know, 26.355. That's our uh, uh, mean mu. So this is again, this is uh, your, this is the mean mu, which is n times p. Right? And uh, yeah, and then uh, over, of course, uh, uh, divided by uh, sigma, and sigma is so sigma. So divide here by sigma, but what's sigma? Sigma is supposed to be square root of n times p times q, right? So again, that's just uh, sigma is just square root of n, and seven fifty-three. Uh, sorry. So fifty-three times p, the zero point zero thirty-five, and then times q, the zero point ninety. Uh, six five. Okay, um, so that will be equal to actually uh, square root of. So if you multiply the three numbers here and then the square root, that's twenty five point forty three. Okay, uh, forty three two I think, etc. And then you take the square root of this. Uh, uh, your answer, right? Square root of this twenty uh, twenty five point. Uh, 432, let's say that would be five point, of course, five point uh, zero four. So let's say here sigma is actually five point zero four. Okay, so yeah, so the sigma, this number here in the denominator in the bottom, that's uh, five point zero four. So this is five point zero four. All right, so let's uh, uh, compute this fraction here. So this is z less than in the top. So we have uh, 30.5, uh, 30 you know, minus uh, 26.355. Uh, uh, so that's actually equal to uh, 4.145 over uh, this 5.05, uh, uh, that's your sigma. Right, uh, or sorry, 5.04. So that's uh, 5.04. So your z actually is going to be larger than 0 0.82, I think. And uh, yeah, so this is larger or equal. So this is area to the right, area to the right, that's one minus the area to the left one minus the area to the left. So this is the probability, one minus the probability that Z is less than 0 0.82. And then once you have this area to the left, then you can use the chart because that's what uh, we have in the chart, the areas to the left. So uh, yeah, so 0 0.82, the nearest 10th is 0 0.8. So if you go to the chart over here, so if you use the chart, okay, where is it? It's coming. Okay, so it's point seventy nine thirty nine. Yeah, seven. And then we subtract that by one. Yeah, absolutely. One minus that. Point. Mm -hmm. Point seven nine thirty nine. So that's the answer would be actually uh, 0 
So we have here 61 and uh, 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 where is it? Um, uh, two zero, I think. All right, so it's, uh, in other words, that's 20.61%. So yeah, guys, I mean, just keep in mind, uh, so this is when, you know, when your Z uh, is larger, so we, uh, or your R is larger, so R is, is more or equal to 30, so R is larger than 30, so we had to add this uh, 0 0.05, right? If it's it's less, then you subtract 0.5, uh, and it when it's between, and actually I didn't do a, an example of between, but that's supposed to be the, the C, I think, or B. But yeah, when it's between, right? So then you uh, subtract 0.5 from the left and you add 0.5 to the right. Uh, so you subtract 0.5. Uh, so let me just write down here for B. So like for B, so you wanna, you wanna your R, the number of successes to be R between, uh, it says between 25 and 35, right? So, when you make this correction, uh, x between, so 25, you're gonna sub you wanna make sure that we include 25. So you need to subtract this 25, uh, subtract 0.5 from 25. And you wanna include the 35. So then you need to add 0.5 to this 35. And then, so yeah, so this is like just x between uh, 24.5 and 35.5, right? And then, uh, yeah, and then as usual, you just, uh, you know, convert your X to Z. Right, here's your Z. I convert this 24.5 to a value of Z. What's the mu? It's the same as uh, the previous uh, question. So it's, yeah, uh, N times P. So again, it's a 26.355, 26. 26.355 and divide with the same sigma. Again, sigma is the same thing. It's the square root of n times b times q. And we said it's 5.044. So the same thing here, we divide here by 5.04. The other side, so same thing, minus, minus 26.355 over the same number, 5.04, the sigma, right? And uh, yeah, so et cetera. And then just remember here, uh, when your Z is between two numbers, then that will be the difference between uh, the probability that Z is less than second number. So we have to switch the numbers, right? So probably that Z is uh, less than the second number minus the probability that Z is less than the, the first number. All right, so guys, uh, thank you for listening. I'm gonna just uh, stop here. Um, Next time, probably I'm gonna finish this exercise and, uh, and then we can move to the next uh, chapter. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you for listening. And I wish you, uh, I hope you're gonna enjoy your break. See you. Thank you. Nice right, enjoy your break guys, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Professor. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, you guys, you too. Take, take care. Hello?